Satoru Fujinuma stands by the track, pondering his fears. The guy is standing over the water. Satoru tears up the manga and pieces of paper float in the pond. Next, he stands in front of the man. Satoru is rejected by the publisher of his manga. At home, the boy reflects on his past mistakes. At work, Satoru goes to deliver orders. Eri Katajiri's girlfriend approaches and laughs at him. Satoru leaves, thinking about Eri. The boy suddenly notices a butterfly. A sharp feeling flashed by. This is not the first time Satoru has gone back in time. He turns his attention to the truck. Satoru follows her. The guy notices that the driver is unconscious. Satoru was spotted by Eri. He sees a boy in front of a truck. Satoru catches up with the truck. The truck is about to hit the boy, but Satoru saves the child. He gets hit by a car. He thinks it's the end for him. The guy woke up in the hospital. Eri asks if he remembers anything. Satoru tells everything. The girl asks if she needs to call. The guy refuses. Eri makes a strange gesture. Satoru doesn't understand. The girl says that he is a closed person and that she knows him differently. The guy was interested. Eri says that he saved the child and that he and the driver are the only ones injured. Satoru asks why the girl is working. Eri says that she has a dream. The guy asks if the girl thinks about the impossibility of her dream. The girl says that she believes in the materiality of words. Satoru is touched by the girl's words. Eri leaves Satoru. The guy is driving in the car and thinks about the repetition phenomenon and notes that it happens before a bad event. The boy returns home. He is met by Sachiko Fujinuma's mother. The boy is puzzled and offers his mother a hotel. The mother refuses. In the evening, Satoru visits his mother. The guy picks up a glass of water. Sachiko reminds of a past tragic event. In the room, he recalls this incident. In the flashback, local boy Jun Shiratori was playing with Satoru. The memory has changed colors, a criminal appears in Satoru's head, it is probably Jun. Satoru carries the packages, his mother walks beside him. The boy pays attention to the child, a sharp sensation again. The guy is looking for a reason. He asks his mother if she doesn't notice anything. The mother suspects the man and the child. Eri appears and greets Satoru. They walk down the street and talk about Satiko. The woman invites Eri to dinner. A man is watching them in the car. Everyone starts having dinner at home. At the table, Eri says that she and Satoru are friends. Eri is going home. Eri gives Satoru a ride. The boy returns home. Satiko tells about the incident in the parking lot. Satoru doesn't understand. Satiko assured that it was a joke. In the morning, the boy reads an article about Tizung. Flashed memories of a classmate who was wiped off the face of the earth. He saw her in the park for the last time. In the memories, little Satoru blames himself that the girl is not around. The guy closes the article. He thinks about trying to forget it all. Satiko is thinking about the man in the parking lot in the supermarket. She assumes that the man wanted to steal the child and changed his mind. Memories flashed by. A woman reads an article. She remembered everything. On the street, she opened a notebook and called. The woman goes home in thought. Satiko entered the house. A woman hears a sound. She looks around. A stranger sticks a sharp object in her back. Satiko falls, but recognizes the stranger. A woman reaches for the phone. Memories flash by. The stranger takes the phone. The woman closes her wet eyes. Satoru is going home. Climbing the stairs, the boy meets a strange man. He notices that the door to the house is open. Satoru enters the house, picks up the paper, and goes into the kitchen. The mother is lying on the floor. Satoru touches his mother and notices a sharp object. A neighbor comes in. He sees a red spot on the boy's hand and screams. The police arrive. Satoru is shocked. The butterfly flies by. The guy runs away, remembering the stranger. Darkness. The boy opens his eyes. He walks down the street. His classmate runs in front of him. Satoru runs after him. The boy sees the school and the inscription 1988. He is confused. Satoru entered the classroom. He realized that he was back in school. The teacher asks the boy to take his place. The guy mistakenly sat down at someone else's desk. Satoru finds his place. The teacher makes a roll call. Satoru wonders if this is all real. The lesson is over. The guy is tense. He's going to go out. A classmate asks where he is. The guy says that he is at the medical center. Satoru runs out of the school. He ran home. The door is closed. The guy mentions the key. He entered the house, inspects the rooms. Satoru's eyes lit up. He takes the red mask and remembers his mother. Satoru is sleeping on the floor. Mother entered the room. The guy is happy to see her. Satiko is preparing food. They have dinner and talk. Satoru scrolls the film of memories in his head. He understood that it was a repetition. Satoru thanks for the dinner. In the morning, Satoru heads to school, scrolling through thoughts and memories in his head. 
Suddenly, he notices the girl Kao Hanazuki. The guy watches her. Satoru notices a bruise on the girl's leg. At recess, Satoru and his classmates talk about hobbies. The company notes that Kenya Kobayashi is the smartest among all. The boy asks Satoru if he has feelings for Kao. Satoru is embarrassed. The guy says he's just thinking about Kao. A classmate promises to arrange a meeting for them. On the street, Kao is standing in front of Satoru. The boy was embarrassed, thinking about what tricks his classmate had resorted to. Satoru offers Kao to become friends, and the girl asks why he is telling her this. Kao adds that it must be because they are two fakes. Satoru was surprised. The girl asks if he misses his mother much. The guy agreed. Kao was about to leave. Satoru admits that he wants to make friends. Kao asks if he will take revenge for her. Satoru froze. A memory flashed. The boy's attention turned again to the girl's bruise. At school, the boy thinks about Kao. Classmates are interested in Satoru's affairs. Satoru offers to go to their permanent place, but the classmate says that he himself suggested not to go there in winter. Satoru was embarrassed. Kenya suspected something. Everyone left. Satoru catches up with Kenya and thanks him for protecting his classmates from unnecessary questions. Kenya asks about Kao. Satoru assures that everything is normal. Kenya advises to read the collection. The boys went their separate ways. Satoru holds Kao's piece in his hands. In her dreams, the girl runs along the seashore on a small island where there are no people. There she remembers the city where she is not. Hearing the sounds, Satoru hides Kao's work. The boy is having dinner with his mother. He is worried about the girl. Satoru suggests inviting his friends to celebrate his birthday. Before going to sleep, Setiko asks about her son's girlfriend. Satoru pretends to be asleep. After school, Satoru looks for Kao. He believes that the girl is being beaten by her mother. In the park, Satoru approaches Kao with the intention of making friends. Kao wonders if the boy is faking emotions. Satoru agrees. Kao said that when she pretends, she feels that it becomes reality. Satoru remembered Eri's words. The guy thinks about a girl's life. Fragments of Kao's life flashed by. Satoru invites her to the party. The girl is shy. Kao asks if it's cold. The guy says he lost his gloves. Kao places her hand on Satoru's. The guy was embarrassed. The girl ran away. The guy said goodbye to the trail. Satoru stands and sets himself the goal of saving the girl. School pupils are skating. They talk about racing. The girls support Kuichi Hamada. Everyone found out that Hamada will compete with Satoru. Kao wishes Satoru well. Satoru promises to win. The boys are getting ready. They started. Satoru is ahead. Hamada was alarmed and overtook the boy. Hamada won. People gossip. Satoru catches his breath, Hamada approaches and pushes the boy with unpleasant words. Satoru realized that he made a mistake like 18 years ago. After class, Satoru asks Kao the date of the girl's birthday. The girl did not answer. She said that he lied and reminded the guy that they are fakes and liars and left. The guy ran to the office. Satoru found the magazine and wants to open it. The teacher appears. The boy said he wanted to know Kao's birthday. The teacher allowed to take the magazine. Satoru says goodbye to the teacher. The guy learned the number of the doomsday. Satoru comes to the park. He is surprised. Kao is not there. The boy notices a toy airplane. He sees the boy behind him. It's Jun. He brings Satoru to himself. Jun is happy that Satoru has friends. Satoru asks Jun about Kao. The guy talks about her and puts the plane on the table. Jun also talks about his work. He rummages through the shelves. Satoru notices strange magazines. Jun noticed this and hid them. Satoru recalls fragments of the interrogation from the future regarding Jun. Satoru went home. The boy remembers Dizung's tragic sentence. Satoru wants to save Jun. The boy came to Kao's house. The door is closed. Satoru notices Kao's things. He finds her in a terrible state. The girl asks not to approach and cries. Kao's mother Aikmi Hinazuki appears behind the boy. Satoru is furious. The woman pushes the guy away and takes Kao away. Satoru asks why the girl is bruised. The girl says that she fell. Satoru is shocked. At home, Kao suffocates underwater. Aikmi hurts her daughter. At school, Satoru stares at Kao's empty seat. Suddenly the girl came. Kao takes off her scarf. Satoru notices a bruise on the girl's neck. The boy tells the teacher about the girl's trouble. The teacher is aware. He says that there have already been attempts to help the girl, but Aikmi is good at covering his tracks. The boy leaves the teacher confused. In the classroom, Shizuku notices the missing lunch money and informs the teacher. The boy's classmate Masato Yanajihara believes that Kao is the culprit. Satoru was furious. Bags are searched in the classroom. Kao gets the funds. Satoru stands up for the girl. The teacher calms down the class. After lessons, Satoru and Kao take turns. Kao thanks the boy and tells the reason for Masato's hatred. Satoru invites Kao to look at the Christmas tree. They climb the mountain, the foxes run up and surround Satoru with Kao. Kao is holding the boy's hand, they were embarrassed when they noticed it. 
Keo and Satoru walk in the open air. Keo is surprised. In front of her is a beautiful tree illuminated by the glare of stars. Satoru suggests coming again in the summer. Keo smiled. At that time, something strange happens at school. Satoru remembers the future course of events. Satoru saw Keo in the park. The boy went to look for gloves. He met Jun. Satoru returns to the park, but does not see Keo. The girl disappeared. The boy continues to think. At school he looks at Keo. All dates flashed in the boy's head. Satoru aims to change the future. February 25th. The boy woke up and is having dinner with his mother. Satoru says that Keo will come to the birthday party. At school, thinking about a plan. The guy wants to pick up the girl on doomsday. At school, Masato scolds Satoru that the teacher thinks she is a thief. Satoru approaches his classmates and calls Keo to the science center. Everyone refuses. Keo comes up. Satoru said that they have a date on Saturday. Keo was embarrassed. At school, Kenya opens a locker. The teacher is calling him. At Keo's house, Satoru asks Aikmi to let Keo go with him on Saturday. Keo was embarrassed. The guy hinted that he was saving a friend. Aikmi pretends not to understand. The guy realized the mistake. Keo hinted that she wanted to leave. The woman swung at her daughter. Satiko appears and stops Aikmi. Satiko makes contact with Aikmi. Aikmi and Keo entered the house. Satoru thanks his mother. They walk down the street and talk about Keo. February 27th. Satoru with Keo in the science center. They are walking along the corridor. Satoru suggests going to the planetarium. He looked at the girl. Satoru felt deja vu. The guy runs to the toilet. The guy thinks about deja vu. He approaches the girl. Deja vu again. The girl thanks for the invitation. Satoru was surprised. The guy remembered that it happened 18 years ago. Satoru realized that he had unconsciously repeated the course of events. He calms down and offers to carry the girl's things. The girl is happy to see you. They meet classmates. At school, the girl greets Satoru. Satoru compliments him. The girl is shy. The boy reminds himself that disaster should befall the girl tomorrow. Keo and Satoru go home. Aikmi appears. The boy says goodbye to Keo. In the morning, the boy runs to Keo's house, remembering that she disappeared that day. Satoru ran. The door opened. The boy takes Keo away. At school, he thinks that he has changed the course of events. Satoru suggests that Keo go to the children's center. They are playing. The girl is going home. Satoru is escorted by Keo. Snow falls. Jun is holding an airplane. Kenya is playing ball. Everything has changed. Satoru says goodbye to Keo. At home, Satoru watches the clock. He thinks that the doomsday is coming to an end. The boy came to Keo's house. He watches clockwise. The day is over. The guy is happy. At home, the boy says goodbye to his mother. He runs to Keo again. Keo opened the door. The guy saw her. At school, the teacher called Satoru from Keo. They are carrying a box. In the supermarket, they pay for the goods. A boy remembers his same birthday. They return to Satoru's house. Classmates congratulate a boy and a girl. Classmates say that they wanted to arrange a surprise. Keo says that she did not have time to finish the gift. The guy is surprised, but calms the girl down. Everyone happily prepares sandwiches. Keo receives a gift from Satoru. The girl sees the gloves, she gets emotional. Keo thanks everyone. Satoru leads the girl. The boy froze. Keo gives her scarf and says goodbye. Satoru goes home and is happy. He fell asleep. In the morning, Satoru found out that Keo did not come to school. He is alarmed. Satoru broods over Keo's absence. The teacher calls him. Satoru was confused. The boy runs to Keo, knocks on the door. Satoru checks the pantry. He notices the tracks. Satoru is watched by Aikmi's boyfriend and asks Aikmi what to do. Aikmi is emotionless. On the street, Satoru watches the children and cries. At home, Satoru is spotted by his mother from the window. She is talking to a colleague about a crime. At the table, Satoru admits that he could not change anything. Satiko encourages her son. At school, the teacher says that Keo went to her grandmother. The whole class is gossiping. The teacher asks Satoru not to reveal the lie about Keo. The guy agreed. The police are at Keo's house all the time. The second child has disappeared. At school they announce to be careful. On the way home, Kenya and Satoru talk about the disappearance of the girls. Satoru is alarmed. Satoru watches the news. Time is running out. At Keo's house, Satoru notices Aikmi. She threw away the garbage bag. The guy suspected something. The guy approaches and sees a pair of gloves inside the package. The boy is filled with memories. The guy got scared and ran. He shouts. Shining, Satoru opens his eyes. He returned in 2006. Satoru looks from the alley. He sees his house and the police. Satoru was worried. The boy under the bridge ponders the cause of the damage to his mother. Satoru has dinner at Chief Takahashi's. Satoru turns on the TV and sees news about himself. The guy runs away and meets Eri. The girl helps Satoru escape. The guy asks why she helps. Eri does not believe that he is capable of crime. Eri returns the article about Keo's disappearance to Satoru. The guy noticed that the date has changed. 
Satoru woke up. He read Era's note. In the pizzeria, the manager is talking to a strange man. Eri says goodbye to Takahashi. A strange man looks after Era. A manager approaches Eri and asks about Satoru. They do not believe in the boy's crime. Satoru reads the articles, something bothers him. Takahashi watches the boy. He wants to turn the boy in. Era appeared and interrupted the call to the police. Eri got angry and hit the manager. The girl asks not to call the police. Eri and Satoru are sitting under the bridge. The boy asks the reason for trusting Era. Eri says she wants to believe. The girl tells about an incident from her childhood. Ira's father was accused of theft, no one believed him, soon the husband lost his job and left the family. Eri says that he believes when it is necessary. The guy asks the girl to say that he forced her to help him. The girl refuses. Eri is at home collecting a change of clothes for Shizuku, when she suddenly receives a message from Satiko. The girl can't believe it. She thinks about how this is possible. Smoke appears from under the door. The girl is scared. The house is on fire. She opened the door. A gust of fire knocked out the windows. Eri fainted. Satoru looks at Eri's house. The boy is shocked. Satoru ran into the house. He calls Eri. The guy found the girl. Satoru picks up Eri and looks for a way out. Eri wakes up and quietly slips her phone into Satoru's pocket. Eri is not confident in his abilities. Takahashi appears and helps the boy. The manager asks Satoru to leave through the black exit. The boys went their separate ways. Satoru sits outside, thinking about all the events. The guy notices a message on Ira's phone. The boy realized with shock that the same person was behind all this. Satoru realizes that the criminal has been watching Eri. Satoru sets out to catch the criminal. In the office, Makoto picks up the phone. He makes an appointment with Satoru. Satoru enters the institution and notices Makoto. Makoto introduces himself. Satoru recognized Makoto. The man says that he does not suspect the boy. In his office, Satoru shows a piece of paper he found in his pocket. Satoru blames himself. Makoto offers to discuss Satiko's call. Makoto's memories flash back. Satiko called him for the last time to say that Jun was not guilty. He told Satoru everything. Makoto mentions the investigation regarding Keo. He hypothesizes that Keo was beaten and thrown into a barn. There were footprints near the barn that matched Jun's footprints. Makoto says he took a picture of Keo's body, then waited half an hour for the girl to freeze, then returned the body to the shed. Makoto mentions a past series of crimes and asks Satoru if he sees a connection to today's events. Satoru is shocked. Makoto says that all these crimes were committed by one person. Eri wakes up in the hospital. She goes out into the corridor and overhears the conversation. The men suspect the girl is Satoru's accomplice. In the ward, the girl's relatives convince her that Satoru is a thief. Eri is reading a newspaper in the store. A man is watching her. The girl does not believe in Satoru's crime. There is someone behind the girl, and he puts his hand. In the office, Satoru tells Makoto about Eri's phone and the fire. He assumes that Satiko and Eri saw the criminal and he decided to get rid of them. Makoto went to the hospital. The boy reads information about the tragedy of a classmate, Hiromi Sujita, on Makoto's computer. Satoru's memories flashed. He understood the cause of the tragedy. Satoru does not believe that Juno is guilty of this. Makaba enters Eri's room. The girl got up. Makaba saw that it was Eri's mother. In the ward, Eri told her mother everything that really happened. The girl is upset that no one believes. The mother assures that she believes her daughter. Eri runs out of the hospital. Her phone vibrates. Satoru picks up the phone. The boy recognizes Era's voice. The girl offers a meeting. Satoru came to the park. The children have problems with the plane. Satoru tells the solution. Children are surprised. The women gossip about Satoru. He decided to leave. Satoru broods under the bridge. The boy met Eri. Eri tells what Gaku Yashiro suspects. Satoru was worried. He talks about his manga idea, about the god of the afterlife. The guy thinks that it has something to do with his life. Eri said that the end is still far away. Satoru expressed that he was glad to meet Eri. The girl was embarrassed. The police appeared and arrested the boy. The girl is in despair. Satoru remembers his younger self and tells Eri that he can fight because of her faith. Satoru leaves and notices the look of the criminal. Everything froze. Satoru stopped and shouted. A replay has occurred. Satoru opened his eyes in the science center. He saw Ko and burst into tears. Classmates come in. Satoru understood that this was the last chance. The company walks down the street and Satoru offers to eat. Kenya asks if Satoru has read the borrowed book. Satoru says no. The boy tries to remember the book. Satoru came home. Satiko is cooking dinner. She asked if everything was fine. Satiko got emotional, saying that he just had a fight with Ko. The guy lives on February 29, 1988 in the third. He and Keo go to school. In class, Satoru apologizes for the lost book. Kenya says that the book never existed. In the corridor, he says that Satoru has changed a lot. Kenya says about a strange feeling and asks the boy who he is. Satoru is shocked. 
Kenya recalls the moment when he noticed changes in the boy. Kenya asks again who he is. Satoru replied that he was a superhero. Kenya left. Satoru tells the boy that Ko is in danger. Kenya offers her help. The boys were late for class. They are serving their sentence. On the street, Satoru asked his friends to wait and ran. Rewind memories. At Jun's house, Satoru asks about Ko. Jun is nervous and asks the reason for the question. Satoru said that they are in the company together, and tensed. Suddenly Dizun was happy for the boy. The boy leaves Jun. Satoru runs, pondering the plan of the unknown criminal. He came to the gym. Classmates are playing. Satoru can't stop thinking. On March 1st, he relives the day. Satoru is about to leave abruptly. Kenya watches. Satoru breaks the window of someone else's house. On the way he noticed Aikmi and followed her. Satoru is about to hurt Aikmi, but is stopped by Kenya. On the bridge, Kenya says that he suspected that something was threatening him too. Satoru says that he broke the window so that the police could come. Satoru tells his plan. Kenya asks not to commit crimes and wants to act together with Satoru. Satoru is escorted by Ko. Ko allows Satoru to steal her. The boy brought the girl to an abandoned bus. Kenya appeared. They went inside. The boys opened the ventilation. Ko lit the lamp. They made a shelter. The boys are leaving. Satoru comes home and excuses his late visit. At night, the boy runs away from home. Mother noticed. Satoru came to the shelter. He treats Ko. The guy tells the girl about the hike and she invites him along. The girl agreed. In the morning, Kenya comes and wakes up Ko and Satoru. At school, the teacher noticed that Ko was not there. Kenya says nothing happened and asks Satoru's opinion. Flashback to the Ko tragedy. Meanwhile, Gaku called someone. Hiromi is sitting with everyone in the shelter. They play cards. Ko thanks everyone for everything. Friends talk about Ko's mother's future actions. At night, Ko sleeps and hears a noise. Someone entered the bus. Ko understood that it was not Satoru. The girl was wary. The stranger hit the box. Ko was scared. The stranger came out. Ko looked out the window. The man was walking away from the bus. Satoru greets his mother. At the table, Satiko asks who Satoru is dating. The guy was embarrassed and did not answer. The boy's mother gives him food. Satoru thanked him and left the house. He ran to Ko. In the shelter, the boy treats the girl. Satoru says that the girl will soon be able to leave the shelter. The guy walks away. Ko noticed the note from Satiko and smiled. Satoru walked past the girl, who would also be a victim of the criminal. At school, the teacher says that Ko is gone again, everyone is worried about where Ko went. In the office, teacher Gaku tells Satoru that he called Child Protective Services and will visit Ko at home. Gaku and the service came to Ko's house. Nobody opens it. Gaku noticed that the door was open and entered. The man walks around the rooms and concludes that Aikmi has run away. He decides to come tomorrow. The guy in the shelter tells Ko everything. The girl gives the boy a gift. The boy saw a pair of gloves. Satoru became emotional. Ko tells about a man who entered the shelter. The girl showed the backpack he had left behind. Kenya opens her backpack. Satoru is in shock. There are suspicious things. Satoru was the only one who understood what these things were. Rewind the memories of the crime. Kenya asks if Satoru has a plan. The guy answers that he has. The company is gathering. Satoru looked at the mark on the box and opened the box. He suspects that the contents of the box were left by a criminal. Satoru panics. Kenya soothes the boy. The company is leaving the shelter. Satoru brought his friends to his house and tells his mother that he just decided not to give up, and that's why they're here. Ko was scared. The woman patted her. Satiko treats the guests. Kenya and Hiromi leave. In another room, Satiko calls Gaku and reports the presence of children. Gaku has a request. Satiko makes an appointment. Meanwhile, Gaku called someone to talk about Ko. Satiko offers to take a bath. Ko and Sachiko are taking a bath. Satiko tickles the girl. Satoru is surprised by the loud laughter. Ko drinks tea after a bath. Satiko wipes the girl's hair. Everyone is going to sleep. Satiko turns off the light and lies between the children. She asks the children if she does not disturb them. Satoru said yes. Satiko got angry and hit the boy. Ko laughed. Ko woke up in the morning and went into the kitchen. She saw the breakfast and was surprised. The girl remembers all her terrible breakfasts. She burst into tears. Ko's house. Aikmi is in her daughter's room. She is throwing everything around. Suddenly the doorbell rang. Aikmi heard her daughter's voice. The woman opened the door and waved at Ko. Satoru and Satiko came out behind. Aikmi threatened Satoru and Satiko. Aikmi was furious. She took the shovel and swung. Ko and Satoru pushed their mothers away. Aikmi blames Satiko. Satoru criticizes Aikmi. Aikmi pushes Ko away. She swung again and saw people from the Children's Protection Fund. Gaku thanks Satiko for her help. The Foundation wants to take the girl away from Aikmi, and the woman dragged Ko with her to the police. Aikmi heard a voice behind her. She stopped and saw her mother. Aikmi's mother kneels and asks for forgiveness. Aikmi is confused. 
she remembers the past. She was beaten and humiliated. In her memories, Aikmi takes all her anger out on her daughter. Aikmi cried and went to her mother. She cried even harder. Satoru noticed that Keo was not moved by this. The boy thanks Huck for his help. Gaku says that Keo will be fine. Satoru thought about his father. Keo thanks Satoru and smiles. The girl gets into the car and looks out the window. Satoru shows the gloves given to him by Keo. The girl left. Satoru runs after the car, but it moves away. Satoru thinks that he was finally able to save Keo. At school, Satoru is tired. His classmates worry about him. Gaku called out to Satoru. The teacher talks about Keo's welfare and asks where Keo has been all this time, and Satoru tells her about the shelter. Satoru sets his next goal to save Hiromi and Aya Nakanishi and brainstorms a plan. He does not know how to meet Aya, the mother advises to approach and tell about the desire to make friends. The guy was embarrassed. After school, the boy says goodbye to his friends and gathers information about Hiromi and Aya's daily schedule. Satoru watches AI and notices Satiko. The boy helps to carry the shopping. Suddenly they heard a car horn. Satiko and her son are driving in Gaku's car. Satoru asks about the master's personal life. Gaku talks about a bad experience. Satoru asks how to approach a strange girl. The teacher advises the boy to interest the girl. Something was sticking out of the cabin in the car. A mountain of candies fell out in the car. Satoru is shocked. Gaku treats the boy and excuses himself. At school, Satoru tells Hiromi that he will go do homework with her. Kenya asked if Satoru is going with Hiromi instead of Keo. Kenya asks the boy to talk to him. The boys from Hiromi came to the bus. Satoru asks Kenya about the footprints in the snow and says that the shoes were wrapped in cloth. They entered the shelter. Satoru said that there is no backpack. Satoru remembers the man who entered the shelter. Satoru assumes that it was a criminal. The guy admits that he protected Keo from a criminal. Hiromi spends the evening with Satoru. Suddenly, Hiromi takes the boy's hand and offers his help. They say goodbye. Satoru remembers the conversation at the asylum. Keo says she trusts Satoru. Satoru listened and remembered Eri's words. The guy runs and promises to save everyone. At school, Satoru calls Kenya to go to the same place with Hiromi. Kazu and Osamu were offered to go somewhere. Satoru refused. The boys realized that they were hiding something and decided to follow. They ran out. Misato closed the book. The girl got up from her chair and left the classroom. Satoru recalls how he blamed himself for Keo and Ai's disappearance and how he graduated from elementary school. Satoru from Kenya and Hiromi approached AI. They introduced themselves. Kenya asked what the girl was reading. She showed the book. Kenya is confused. Kazu from Osamu is watching them. Aya said that she saw the boys going forever to some building across the river and said that it was for children. Kenya got angry. Aya asked if it was a superhero game. The girl took her things and left. Kazu appeared that this building is the spirit of adventure. Oh, it's confusing. Kazu offered to leave somehow. Aya ran away. In the Satoru building, he thinks about how to get closer to AI. Suddenly, Aya appears. Everyone is surprised. At school, Kazu says goodbye to his classmates and runs to meet Aya. Kenya, in class, Hiromi thanks Satoru from Kenya for not leaving her alone. Asamu appears and calls to the building. Misato walks past the teacher. Satoru thinks that he has changed the crime plan. At home, he ponders that his mother knew who the criminal was and assumes that the criminal is looking for other people to commit crimes. Hiromi confronted Misato. Afterwards, Hiromi tells that Misato is single now after the incident with the dinner. Satoru plans to talk to the girl. In the morning, Satoru has breakfast and runs to school. At school, he noticed Misato's loneliness. The girl got on the bus. Satoru didn't get to talk to Misato. Classmates are suitable. Kenya asks about Misato's loneliness and asks for help. Satoru agrees and says goodbye to his friends. Satoru came to the hockey rink. He noticed Misato herself. The girl left and went to the toilet. The guy notices that she is long and decides to take a look. Suddenly the teacher appears, Aya asks what happened. Satoru says that he wanted to talk to Misato and learns that she went outside. Satoru asks Gaku for help. Satoru rides in the car with Gaku and talks about playing detective. Gaku was surprised and said that they have a lot in common. Gaku twitches his finger nervously. Satoru wants to get candy. The guy didn't find them. The teacher says that it is not his car and smiles sinisterly. Gaku tells that the boy lied, playing detective is not a game at all. Gaku changed the route. Satoru was excited. Gaku told that Masato was taken away by Jun's father. Gaku reveals that he is a criminal. He says that Satoru ruined his plans. Satoru is shocked. Gaku revealed the plan to kidnap Masato. Satoru despaired. Satoru remembers all the clues of the research. The car arrived at the reservoir. Satoru fails to unfasten his seat belt. Gaku took the ball and said that he was going to destroy Satoru. Satoru is aggressive. Gaku pressed the gas with the ball. Satoru is in a panic. 
The car went into the water. Water fills the car. Satoru shouted that he knew Gaku's future. Satoru can't breathe. Memories flashed by. A hamster runs in a wheel. Gaku tells a story from the past. A classmate had hamsters, they bred. Gaku decided to get rid of them, but one survived. It stated that the sinner had a chance to get out of hell through the web, but it broke. From that moment on, Gaku began to see webs above people that he wanted to tear apart. But his plans were disturbed by Satoru, so the web appeared above him. Satoru never made it to God's eternity. Gaku saw in him a surviving hamster. Satoru's mother works, cooks, sleeps, she spends time alone. The year 2003 is on the calendar. In the hospital, Satiko saw Satoru with wide eyes and cried. The doctor says that the boy slept for 15 years. Satoru is shocked. All the time, Satiko took care of her son's body. The doctor asks about the boy's memories. A murky rewind of memories. Satoru failed. The guy looks at his face. Satoru does not understand who he is. In the morning, Hiromi and Kenya came to Satoru. Satoru tells that Kenya became a lawyer and Hiromi a doctor. It seemed to the boy that Kenya wanted to ask something, but Satiko forbade it. Friends said goodbye. Satoru struggles to walk. He is watched over by a sick girl, Kumi Kitamaru. The boy catches his breath. Kao appeared with a baby. Satoru cried. Kao talks about his personal life. Kaya is looking for those responsible for Satoru's trouble. The guy calms her down. Kao gets up and thanks Satoru. The baby cried. Satoru and the baby's hands touched. The baby calmed down. Kao says goodbye to Satoru. Satoru is drawing in the ward. He drew Kao. Satiko entered the room and closed the curtains. Satiko says that the journalists there want to write an article about the boy. Dr. Kitamura appeared. Satoru asks to increase the load on his legs. In the corridor, Kitamura is talking on the phone and tells about the improvement of Satoru's condition. Satoru resumes the move. The guy is resting and notices Kumi. The girl ran somewhere. Kenya and Makoto visited Satoru. They left the room. In the park, Satoru approaches Kumi. The girl talks about her illness and her fear of surgery. Satoru helps the girl feel brave. Kumi smiled. Someone is taking pictures of them. These are journalists. Gaku forbids the boys from taking pictures of Satoru. Gaku approaches Satoru and introduces himself. In the ward, Gaku tells the reason for the name change, how he met Kumi, and that he was waiting for the boy to wake up. Satoru hints at memory loss. Gaku believes that the boy will remember everything. Satoru is on the mend and visits Kumi. Satoru, on his way to Kumi, ran into Gaku. Gaku tells that he just visited her and advises him not to go because the girl is sleeping. Satoru offered to talk. Gaku takes the boy somewhere. The boy was worried. They enter an unknown elevator. They ended up on the roof. Satoru remembered everything. Touching the baby Kao, memories flashed before Satoru. He remembered everything. In the ward, Kenya and Hiromi suspected that Satoru had remembered everything. Satoru agreed. Kenya tells how he waited for Satoru to wake up. The boy points out that Satoru should not fight alone and rely on the help of his friends. Memories of Eri flash through the satyr. Satoru told his friends who the criminal was. On the roof, Gaku remembers how Satoru ruined all the plans. Gaku asks Satoru how he predicted everything and what the words about the teacher's future meant. Satoru asks if he will hurt him once he tells everything. Gaku notices something in the boy's pocket and suspects that it is a phone. He took the phone and showed a message from Kumi. Satoru was worried. Gaku told that Kumi's IV contained poisonous substances and the package had Satoru's fingerprints on it. Satoru understood that Gaku wanted to throw the guy off the roof. The guy hesitates. Gaku assumes that Satoru was lying about his future and writes a message to Satiko on behalf of Satoru. Before this moment, Satoru confessed to his mother that he remembered everything. Satiko said that she suspected. Satoru stands up and says firmly that he wants to move forward. Satiko was moved. On the roof, Satoru remembers the past and says that then the teacher became like a father to Satoru and filled the hole in his heart. Gaku says he was waiting for Satoru to wake up. The guy moved away from Gaku and said that he won. Satoru tells that he saved all the victims from Gaku's hand and even his mother was going to suffer in the future. Gaku is confused. Satoru told how he saved everyone. Gaku is angry. Satoru pushed Gaku and runs away. The guy wants to fall off the roof. Gaku saved Satoru. Satoru says that Gaku can't hurt Satoru and suggests that Gaku was painfully waiting for the boy to wake up. Gaku remembers sitting next to the boy and watching. Satoru says that he has lived his life several times and only he knows who Gaku really is. Gaku burst into tears and let the boy fall. Gaku admitted that he could not live without Satoru and gathered after him. He suddenly noticed that Satoru was alive. The boy winked. Gaku burst out laughing. The man was arrested and taken away. Meanwhile, Satoru tells his friends that faith gives hope. Satoru finds his treasure in his friends. In the office, a man praises Satoru's work. 
The guy promises to move in this direction. The man led Satoru out of the office. Satoru went outside and noted to himself that after getting a job, there was no recurrence. 